Let's talk about the news. And I got to say, um, we got the story from tipguest.com. Criminal case against Epstein's prison guards dropped on Thursday. Just one day after Ghislaine Maxwell is convicted of sex trafficking, the charges against Epstein's prison guards are dropped. Now, yesterday, my friends, I pointed out after reading the headline that we would be demonetized because when a story is this big and this important, there's no point in trying to dance around it. We will be demonetized. And then, of course, I threw it over to Luke and Luke just went off. And so we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll carry on with that new tradition. Luke? This criminal cover up <laughs> is reaching its epidemic to the point where it's epidemic. What? <laughs> you know what I'm trying to <laughs> say here? Are you freaking kidding me? Like the guards, the guards that were sleeping, falsifying records, the people that were responsible for the, the, <laughs> I can't say it, can you? <laughs> oh my gosh, Luke. For the extermination of oh, 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 let's just let's just say Jeffrey Epstein was left alone in his cell by sleeping guards and then later was found not alive anymore. Indeed, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Facts. Whatever you may call it. Some people like to name it a part of a, someone who was running as a presidential candidate, but that's another thing. But these guards were caught napping. They were caught allegedly looking up the news. They were caught looking uh, for motorcycles and furniture and other expensive items. What were they were doing? Well, they falsified the records here, and there were the ones that were supposed to be doing the rounds, checking on Epstein, making sure that, of course, he did not hurt himself in any way, shape, or form. And, of course, they absolutely failed on that job. What happened to Epstein? No one knows. The video footage of his first alleged attempt to hurt himself was literally destroyed and not found under the hands of the authorities that, of course, later came out with the statement by James Comey's daughter and said, oh, no, we just we just lost the tapes. We don't know what happened. There was, of course, a second attempt, attempt whatever may happen. We don't know because, again, these guards were allegedly too busy looking to buy motorcycles to find out. So again, the, the evidence here is being once again destroyed. And the fact that these guards had their charges dropped by the federal government shows you just how complicit, how disgusting, how rotten this system is, and how they want you to forget this very important story, the story of the decade. When the mainstream media was promoting Jeffrey Epstein, as some kind of great philanthropist. They were promoting him as some kind of big money guy, a Wall Street guy, a hedge fund guy. Everyone, including even Miss McCain, knew that he was up to extremely awful, horrible things. And everyone within the government knew what he was doing. The FBI knew since the 90s, and they were sitting on their hands as thousands of children were being hurt and literally sacrificed at the altar for the ruling elites to do whatever they wanted to in horrible, disgusting ways. And I got I a lot more to say about this than Prince Andrew's sure. connected to this, but you got to say something to I got to say something very important for everybody who's listening to this segment. The reason this story is dropping just before New Year's Eve, viewership is going to be down across the board. Ratings are going to be down. Everyone's on vacation. No one's paying attention. They are covering this up. Hmm. They sealed the records. The trial was rushed through. We, we got a glimpse through a keyhole. There was more evidence the FBI had and apparently it was cataloged that's never gone, been gone through. And now they're saying, with the records being resealed, all of these high-profile individuals who are flying on this plane, never going to find out about it. They drop the trial. The, the, the conviction comes just after Christmas. They're dropping the criminal charges against the guards in the prison where Epstein lost his life. And it's happening on, during a holiday. It, it, is, it is. You do this. This is, this is a PR dead zone. Okay. Companies release information. The news comes out on Friday nights or during holidays to make sure no one sees it. Now, I, I don't have all the answers. This is a but, I, I, yeah. but, but people, you need to make sure that people hear this story. Because as big as it was when we heard Epstein was no longer alive in his prison cell, hmm. this, story, this story that the guards are having their charges dropped needs to be just as big. And we're fighting a, a, a massive... 30-foot wall from sea to shining sea, keeping this information out, and that is releasing it on a holiday. This is absolutely a criminal cover-up and nothing else. What else can you can you say here? Why did the government say, hey, these people that are responsible for thousands of children never getting justice, these guards that are responsible for these 
men that hurt children in unspeakable ways, never facing justice. These guards are the ones responsible for it. They have so much weighing on their decisions that night, and they're not going to be held responsible for one of the biggest injustices in our legal justice system. I mean, Epstein was in the hands of the authorities. They had everything. He would have spoken. He would have leaked names. He had the profiles. He had the DVDs. He had the CDs. He had the hard drives on so many prominent individuals that, of course, he surveyed. He had so much blackmail, so much power, so much truth, and the federal government is squashing it, making sure you will never see it. And that is utterly disgusting because your tax dollars, your ignorance, literally allowed some of the worst human atrocities to happen on the face of this earth that were sanctioned, stamped on by the approval of the federal authorities, by the police officers, the prosecutors, the judges, the politicians, the regulators. All of them were involved here, and this system is rotten to its core. And to see this major story break now... On, on a Thursday, right before New Year's, hmm. this is deliberate. This didn't happen today, by the way. People need to understand. This happened some uh, unknown time ago, and now we're finding out about it? it? It's absolutely crazy. Owen, do you want to say something? Well, the thing that I think about in issues like this is why has society become so apathetic? What is it? I mean, oh, this is a little bit, you know, tangential, but like, what is it in our food system that makes us so apathetic towards this? What is it about our day-to-day boring drive to work that makes us so apathetic sugar and yeah, <laughs> yeah sugar. And, and like what is it about the you know the the st- over stimulation that we see in society that makes us not care about this so and then from that standpoint if you can kind of pull out a little bit what could the average person even do let's say that this head broken during a peak news cycle what could the average person even do about it to where they're not so demoralized that they just sit there sure. and go i don't know what do you want me to do and then right. they just get back to the to the bread and circus. You know, mm-hmm. well, I was just thinking we should do a skit like the movie Don't Look Up. So in the movie, you know, I guess spoiler alert. It's not that big of a spoiler because if you know if you read what the movie's about, it's just people saying like there's a there's a meteor, a comet going to hit the earth, and they go on they go on TV, and the people on TV are like, uh huh. I I think they would be it would be fascinating to have a similar sketch where it's like Luke goes on a talk show and he's like, <gasps> powerful global elites are flying on these planes, including the former president. Two, two former presidents. You got the one of the wealthiest men in the world. There are children being trafficked, and they're like, "That's so crazy! <laughs> How can I get one of these flights?" <laughs> I think that and has just happened, <laughs> right? Yeah, you know? yeah, no, no, that's an that's an excellent idea. Even for a funny skit video, in, instead of the asteroid coming to destroy Earth, it's a whole bunch of like hopped up billionaires that are ready to like do horrible things to it's small just like, children. And there's like, an epidemic of them going wild, literally having their way and doing unspeakable wait, things wait, wait. and hurting children. Fif- like fifty Bill Gates yeah. marching through the streets. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Gates gets a mutation device where he <laughs> replicates and there's thousands of them and they're all going on and like like a pandemic of the zombies. But instead of zombies, they do other unspeakable things, uh, well, uh, especially I'll, to I'll little say, children. And then there's no future. And then we can make this like a no future <laughs> because there's no more children because uh, the, the Bill Gates is and the other horrible people have their ways with them. But there's also a lot of other I'll, important I'll, details just, here that we got to talk about with Prince Andrew. I'll say one more thing and I'll throw it to you on Prince Andrew. I just want to <laughs> let people know that when Luke wakes up in the morning, well, I shouldn't say in the morning, when, when Luke wakes up just around the crack of noon yeah. and he's very groggy and tired and I'm like, I got to get this guy whipped into shape. There's actually one magic word I can say to make it so that Luke instantly is in 110%. <laughs> he's like walking around, he's in his pajamas and he's like, I'm tired, man, you got any coffee? And I go, Epstein. <laughs> he goes, that son of a, I'll tell you <laughs> And then he just goes off and he's it's 100%. Mm, and I'm like, he's day. ready for the day. How can in the I, world can I, you can not? I, can I comment <laughs> about that? This is pretty important what you just said there. So if you when you study spiritual growth, there's books like, uh, power, okay, power versus force um, that you can look up. And they talk about how the, one of the lowest levels in human consciousness is apathy, mm-hmm. right? And the next level above that is anger. And so in many ways, I think the mainstream media plays into that where if somebody's in an apathetic mode and then you put a story about love or peace or joy or fun, that doesn't resonate. What energizes us in a, in my little thing that I do, I call it a derp state, basically this apathetic derpy state that most of us are in and they will have to fight our way out of um, what happens is that the media knows that, makes people angry, and so we're kind of stuck in this thing where it's hard to get people to that next level, right? So in spiritual growth, they, you know, if you've ever read uh, Eckhart Tolle, mm-hmm. he calls his second book is called A New Earth, you know, and a lot of people talk about that. Like, what would a better world actually look like? And when most of us are eating the wrong foods, and we're spaced out, and we're in apathy, and then you hear about Jeffrey Epstein, I mean, let's be, like, I loved your point, you said, Tim, and I took a huge amount of knowledge from that, but then I honestly do wonder, even if that had been posted on a major news day, would anything have even happened? I mean, it is so much in your face, I probably more would have. Well, well, I'll mm. say this, man, I think it was a big red pill moment for a lot of Americans yes. when the dude 
was no longer alive in his prison cell. Mm -hmm. We'll just we'll say it that way because on a well, no, he was just he was just he was there, and then all of a sudden he was no longer alive. Whatever you want, whatever you want to say about it. The point is, a lot of people were just like, "Whoa!" Mm -hmm. And so that may not have a direct effect on will they go outside and protest, but it'll probably have a big impact on what they read in the news and could shift culture yeah. very, very much so. I like to say "taken out" because there's many interpretations where you could kind of allude to what happened here. But this is a key linchpin story that that has a lot of people's confidence in the entire system hanging in the balance because people understand if your system if your tax dollars if your police officers your judges your prosecutors are literally out there participating aiding and abetting or looking the other way as children are being hurt in unspeakable ways that's a system that does not have any trust within it and this is why the when this story broke there was a huge response to this not by the corporate media not even by the big tech social media people had to force the hashtag jeffrey epstein didn't blank himself that hashtag went almost everywhere corporate media was forced to cover it and and the and the, the the kind of veil surrounding this entire system started to unfold because people started to see how people how things really work in washington dc you know that bill that's very popular populist policies that never get passed why don't they get passed what power do these special interests have what extortion abilities what blackmail do they have for these politicians to always turn their back on the citizens and never deliver on their promises well we got a sneak peek at it we got a small window we got the tip of the ice with Jeffrey Epstein and the rabbit hole goes a lot deeper uh, now uh, so what can the average person do about this their attention their energy just mm -hmm. even understanding this is extremely powerful mm -hmm. because the system can't function if un if not enough people believe in them mm -hmm. right? okay so, so the Go oh, God. No, no, no. I was just going to say that, like, that, that's something that's really bothering me, too. That's this, You keep iterating the same question. I keep thinking. It's just like, okay, so what? What can you do? What can the average person do? Yes, being red-pilled on this whole story is pretty important. But maybe at some level it would uh, help people feel like they could um, sort of – if they see this on the national level and they see how deep it is and how corrosive the whole system can be with an issue like this, then maybe it would make them think, well, I can't let this happen at the local level. You know, I mean, if uh, because like they can't do anything about Manhattan if they're in some in the Midwest somewhere, but they could be aware of wow, if it could happen there, then it can happen here, and they're going to do whatever they can to get engaged in local politics and local school school boards and mm -hmm. figure out ways to make sure that there's accountability when bad stuff happens. It's it's mm -hmm. it's not just about voting. It's not just about getting involved or anything like that. If one day, let's just put it this way, let's say tomorrow we woke up and literally every single person in this country was actively against critical race praxis in schools. It would be gone. Because all of a sudden, even Democrats would be like, we are going to lose because people are so strongly against this. Everybody who heard that story about these prison guards and immediately regular people who are not in politics were like, yo, what the just happened? That's a moment where people might just say very simply, I'm not going to put money towards certain things. I'm going to read different news sources. It can cause such a major cultural shift that I think an important point that Luke brought up is confidence in a system is the only way the system can function. So if one day everybody woke up and felt that the U.S. dollar had no value, it would literally have no value. So when people get this news, it changes their perception. Yeah. It can strip confidence away from the system. That's why they put it out just before New Year's Eve when nobody's paying attention. And, and if the mm. government cared about you or your children or just innocent children at all, they would have went to those guards and they would have said, okay, what happened here? Did you really just fall asleep? Were you really buying furniture here? Were you buying a motorcycle here? Or did something else happen? We're going to uh, put pressure on you. You're going to face a very stiff sentence for this dereliction of duty because you just created injustice for thousands of children. They didn't do any of that. They just mysteriously, someday before this, dropped the charges when did they drop the charges we don't know because again a lot of this as tim is saying was specifically scheduled in a way so not enough people know about this they're afraid of more people finding out about this and this is why if the feds really cared about you they would have went to maxwell and, and they would have been like okay you were the procurer who did you procure who to who else was in this? Who else was involved here? Who else were you hanging out here? Tell us Prince and Andrew. we'll give you a lesser sentence. One of those individuals admittedly is the man who doesn't sweat at all, doesn't have any sweat glands, according to him, <laughs> is of course Mr. Prince Andrew, the Queen's son. The Queen's and, and the royal family have a lot of connections to really awful people who do very similar things that Epstein did, by the way. This, Epstein is not the first person connected to the royal family that does these awful, horrible yo, things. Yo, there's a, there's a, real quick, there's a picture of Epstein and Maxwell at the Queen's cottage. Yep. Mm -hmm. There's oh, a yeah. picture of Kevin Spacey 
and Ghislaine Maxwell sitting on the throne. <laughs> uh, are you kidding me? How many of these people are interconnected? Like, <laughs> okay, well, I just wanna, <laughs> the way that I think about it, okay, when you're in a business, basically the way most businesses function is you keep gradually increasing the price. And then what you do is you tend to shrink what it is that you're giving. And then you wait until customers stop buying. Right. Mm -hmm. So there was freedoms that were won for us by people largely in the past. Mm -hmm. And what happened is, is that the establishment can begin to infringe on those freedoms or even flaunt this nonsense in our face. And as long as there's no boundary, that will keep going. Right. Because if you're in a business and then you just keep raising the price, raising the price, at a certain you're like, they're just going to let us keep raising the price. Say, say you sell orange juice, mm -hmm. you keep giving less and less orange juice. The point is like one drop. <laughs> right, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. you're, you're like, they're gonna buy a drop for a hundred dollars. Well, do it for do it for a thousand dollars then. Right. And so what's happening is that back in the day, when the kind of people lived in our society who would have had some kind of a boundary, they can't just push the envelope like they have in 2020, like they have with Epstein, all this different kind of stuff. But I look at myself, so you know, me and Luke are friends, and I've been listening to what he's saying for years, Tim. I've watched what you're saying for years, and I'm like, it's like, okay, I'm sold. What do I do? Right, and it's like, I don't know what to do. So talk so, to people. Uh, and I and I do, and I make videos about it, and, and I have a new video series about it, and all that kind of stuff. But I just, like, when I'm teaching a seminar, for example, in personal growth, what we try to do is get people to buy into this idea that they should improve, and then we give them a direction on what to do. For somebody who, so for me watching this, it's like what, me watching a seminar with this incredible theory, but what do you do? You so I love tell what people you said. About it. Yeah, mm -hmm. you tell more people about it. Because... Like I, like I think confidence in a system is the most important thing, mm -hmm. taking it away. Mm -hmm. if, if people aren't paying attention and don't care, the criminals get away with it. Mm -hmm. But if, you, if you've got, if you've got 100 people and they all have their backs turned to a bank, the bank robber is like, now's my chance. If you tell, hey, everybody turn around and they all do, the guy's going to be like, I'm, going the other, I'm not going to do this. Mm -hmm. Everybody's watching now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one way to put it. Once everyone's paying attention, it makes it very difficult for criminals to get away with this stuff. It's because people get mad, people vote, people don't buy things. It breaks confidence in the system. If every single person in this country was focused on this story right now and believed something wrong was happening, the politicians would be sweating bullets. Yeah. They can only get away with it if people are not paying attention to what they're doing. When, with that attention, it is leading to some circumstances. Ghislaine Maxwell, awful person, according to all her accusers, is going away. Jeffrey Epstein, no longer here. If we were totally blind to this entire situation, that operation would have been going on. VH, VH1 was making documentary pieces about how great Epstein was, how much money he had, and people were falling for that trap. And there was people coming to him with their children and be like, yeah, you're cool, we wanna hang out. Not knowing that this is a big monster that will hurt you. That the, the more we know about these monsters, there's a reason Bill Gates spends hundreds of millions of dollars buying off the corporate media, literally. He sent, I think, $319 million dollars all over the corporate media he does that because without people's ignorance he can't get away with a lot of the stuff that he's doing and he's rarely ever he was asked i think once or twice about his connection to of course jeffrey epstein there's a far bigger extensive uh, uh, connection here his response to it was atrocious his response to it was even more surprising than even the question being asked the first time but but again this story doesn't end and i, and I just be, before we end i want to talk about prince andrew because this also is the breaking of the dam of this entire establishment system that is so uh, disgusting and it has so much blackmail in it because Andrew's lawyers are now holding emer emergency talks. There's the, the victim's defense lawyer who said that Andrew should be shaking in his boots. He just filed a motion to make sure that all of the witness testimony, including his deposition, is kept secret from the general public. This has never been heard from before. He's facing a civil suit uh, in the United States. He's making a lot of outlandish arguments. We're still waiting for him to be deposed. And when he's deposed, he's going to be sitting there in front of the lawyers representing the victims, the children here that were hurt here. And he's going to have to answer some <clears throat> serious questions. And th there's a lot of that them, including how the royal protection officers literally destroyed evidence to his alibi. There is a lot of dirty, disgusting things happening here, and it's only our uh, ability to talk about it, get it out there, that is able to stop a lot of this in its tracks, and it did it's, work in some way. It's it's hard to it's hard to move on from the story because I'm really quite offended that they're putting it out right now, mm. and it's obvious why. That, that's why I've brought it up so much. So, so please, guys, if you're hearing this, keep this fresh in your mind. Keep a, keep a tab open in your browser with the story and get ready to share it in the next week or so to let people know you got to pay attention to this stuff 
because these are these are evil people doing evil things. But one last thing, one last thing. I'm sorry, I, I just have a million things I want to say, but I just really quickly. This also bridges the gap between the left and the right. People on the left agree. People on the right agree. What happened here in this specific instant is an absolute horrible case of government out of control that is absolutely unaccountable. This is a potential item that could bring us all together against that powers that be that truly do run things and truly make things miserable for but, us and it shatters that divide and conquer agenda that's why I, I talk about this so much and i get so passionate about it because it's so important let me let mm -hmm. me give a shout out to hassan piker huh. he's got a tweet hassan us uh, at hassan the hun i responded with eight fire emojis oh. he said my thoughts are with the clinton family in this trying time as their close and personal best Ooh. friend pictured front and center at nice. chelsea clinton's wedding oh is going to federal prison for sex trafficking minors oh my. and according awesome. to one report i saw i haven't fact checked this one apparently the wedding was like invite only no strangers allowed so yeah yeah this 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 does bring the left and the right together very much so hmm. and there's there's a viral tweet that, that uh, a tweet that went viral it was posted all over reddit and someone said, if Joe Biden was involved with Epstein, then he should go to prison. If Donald Trump was involved with Epstein, he should go to prison. See, was that so hard? And I'm like, no, it wasn't, because literally everyone agrees. Mm -hmm. The left, and, so you, the, the, there's people who are trying to make it seem like Trump supporters are like, well, Trump should get away with it. I'm like, no, no, no. Everybody agrees. Release the documents. Show us the book. Show us everybody. Show us the tapes. I don't care if they're on the left or the right. That's it. All the more reason to bury it. Exactly. On lag week. Yeah, that yeah, makes a well, lot of divide, sense. Luke mentioned divide and conquer yeah. is so very much important for the for the establishment. Mm. And this is the one thing that brings us together, and it scares the crap out of the establishment. It scares the crap out of the corporate media. They want this story to go away. This decision, again, I have to say this again. This decision with the federal government dropping these charges didn't happen today. It happened some other time. We don't know when. It happened deliberately in a way, so we do not pay attention to it. That, and, and, and when they're doing all this, you know, it's showing that, that their propaganda is extremely important for everything that they're doing, and it could be stopped with the truth. Thanks for checking out this segment from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to watch live, you can check out this channel Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. And if you want more unfiltered and uncensored content with all of these guests, go to TimCast.com and become a member. All of these guests you know and love in exclusive segments on our website where we are unrestricted in what we talk about. So you'll definitely not want to miss it. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you all next time.